In this video, we'll explore a workflow for replacing any real object, such as a building or any other item, with its 3D model counterpart. This allows us to modify it as we please and achieve a perfect illusion of realism. For example, we'll show how to reconstruct this castle in 3D, rework it, and align it perfectly with the real footage. This process requires several techniques, the most important being camera tracking and the reconstruction of the object using photogrammetry. First, we need to shoot the scene that will be used in the final video. Essentially, we are filming the subject as we want it to appear in the final video. This will be the footage where we replace the real subject with the virtual one. However, we need to pay attention to an important aspect. This footage will also be used for camera tracking, which means reconstructing the movement of the virtual camera, something we'll cover later. This means that the video must meet certain criteria, which we can summarize as follows. Firstly, the footage must be stable and without too much shaking. Ideally, use a gimbal or stabilized shooting. It can also be done handheld, but in that case, make sure there aren't any abrupt movements as it will be difficult for Blender to identify the movement of various markers. If possible, you can also use a stabilization technique based on the gyroscopic data of your camera. For example, in this case, we used a Sony mirrorless camera. The original footage was taken without any stabilization, as you can clearly see here. However, since the movements of the camera are recorded as metadata in the footage, it's possible to stabilize it later using software like Catalyst Browse. Here we see the original footage, and here is the stabilized footage without using a gimbal. Additionally, if possible, make a note of the focal length you're using. Another important aspect is the type of movement. To reconstruct the camera movement, there needs to be a change in parallax between the various planes. In simple terms, this means avoiding standing still and rotating the camera as if it were on a tripod. Instead, you need to physically walk around to achieve a change in perspective. Also, avoid changing the focal length or zooming in and out. Now, we need to take photos of the subject so we can later reconstruct it in 3D using photogrammetry. The first thing to do is take many photos of the subject from various angles. The idea is to have as many viewpoints as possible, allowing the software to reconstruct the 3D model accurately. Therefore, take photos from various angles, getting closer and farther away as well. As with the video, do not change the focal length between shots. Also, remember to take the photos around the same time as the video to ensure similar lighting conditions. Now we need to use the photos to reconstruct the 3D model. There's a very powerful and free software for this called Meshroom. You need to import all the photos and start the analysis process. You can find all the details on the official website. In my case, I used another software called PhotoScan, but the mechanism is the same. Once the model is created, we can move on to the next phase. The first thing to do is import the video into Blender to reconstruct the movement of the virtual camera. So let's open the motion tracking panel. Here, we need to import the video. If we have the data for the focal length used and the sensor, we can set them here. Unlike motion tracking with markers added by us, as in the case of chroma key videos we've discussed extensively on the channel, in this case, we can let Blender automatically detect the markers to track. With the Detect Features button, Blender attempts to identify the best markers for tracking. We can then start tracking all the markers by clicking on the corresponding icon. However, not all markers are tracked correctly. Therefore, it's essential to clean up the problematic markers before solving the scene. Remove markers that show abrupt changes in their movement curves or those that visually do not correctly follow the feature in the video. 
Before proceeding, we need to ensure we also add manually defined markers. This is important for two reasons. First, to add any well-visible and easily trackable markers that for some reason were not added automatically. But more importantly, we need to add markers in strategic points that will later help us correctly position the 3D model we reconstructed. Indeed, we will need to align the 3D model so that it perfectly matches the video footage. To do this, we need some reference points in strategic positions. For example, it could be a corner of the model in a very noticeable spot. Define at least three of these markers, preferably spaced apart. We can now proceed to solve the scene to obtain the virtual camera. Ideally, the error should be below one, but this is rarely achieved on the first try. The first step is to remove problematic markers. In the cleanup section, we can filter and remove markers that, for example, have an error above a certain threshold. With filter track, we can also select and then delete markers that have abnormal movement curves. Additionally, we can refine the parameters of the focal length and the optical center during the solving process. Let's try again. If everything went well, we can set up the 3D scene. But first, let's identify the ground by selecting at least three markers that are on the floor. Additionally, it's useful to set a scale. If we know the distance, even approximate between two markers, we can set it here. Now we need to associate these tracking data with the camera. So let's select the camera and from the constraints panel, select camera solver. This associates the newly obtained movement data with the selected camera. As we can see, the camera moves correctly. Now let's set the video as the camera background. Finally, switch to the camera view. If we don't see the markers, open the Overlay Options panel and select Motion Tracking. We then see the actual movement and markers in the camera's subjective view, which perfectly overlap with the real markers in the video. We can now, if desired, better align the scene to the global axis. For example, by selecting the floor markers, we can move and rotate the camera so that they align with the virtual floor in Blender. Now we need to import the 3D model. The most delicate phase is aligning it perfectly with the real video. This is where the markers we added manually come in handy. One method I suggest is setting the origin of the 3D model to a vertex corresponding to one of the markers we added. This allows us to scale the model without shifting its origin point. Practically speaking, by anchoring the model's origin to a corner, we can now scale the model to match the size in the original video while keeping it aligned with the defined origin. The next step is to rotate and scale the model again to align it with the markers we added manually. Here we see the importance of defining precise markers. Naturally, the more accurate we are in this phase, the better the final result will be. As we can see, the 3D model overlaps quite faithfully with the underlying video. Now we just need to modify the 3D scene as we wish. We can add special effects, modify the 3D model, or add other elements. In this demo, we simply added a robot and simulated the destruction of a wall. The last aspect to consider before rendering is lighting, and this is a crucial point. Depending on the type of light during the shoot, the 3D model we created has a texture that already contains the lights and any shadows as seen in the original video. This is why ideally photogrammetry should be done on a cloudy day. However, if, as in this case, there was direct sunlight, we need to match the lighting in Blender to the real lighting. To keep things simple in this example, I added uniform lighting by increasing the general diffuse illumination.
But if you need to add 3D objects that interact with your model and, for instance, cast shadows on it, consider adding an HDRI image with a lighting profile similar to that of the real video. Here, I only added a light inside the castle to illuminate the robot. Now we can render the scene, but remember to set the background to transparent first. As for the format, you can use PNG with an alpha channel or, for maximum quality, the compressed EXR format. Now that we have the rendering, the final step is compositing. You can use any software. In this case, I used After Effects. Import both the original video and the 3D sequence. First, you will need to perform a basic color correction to match the exposure, contrast, and colors. Then, add a mask so that the edges of the 3D model blend perfectly with the real video. This can be done in various ways. In this case, I created a mask that follows the inner contour of the castle, so we have the 3D model in the central part and the real video around it. You should also blur the edges of the mask slightly for better blending. With this technique, it is possible to mix real scenes and 3D objects to modify certain elements of the video as desired.